Okay, so new insights into PIN codes. And I asked you yesterday to write down gender, four digit PIN that you think you will be able to remember in a month from now on, a four digit PIN that you think you will not be able to remember in a month from now on, and also a seven digit PIN that you think you will be able to remember in a month from, uh, from now on. Now, I was thinking about giving you paper notes now and ask you to see if you can remember the pin codes that you made yesterday because then, then I can make a comparison. Uh, I'll refrain from doing that now. I will do my talk instead. But Yep, correct. As I said, a work in progress. <laughs> but again, um, I have done this little experiment with uh, different groups. The first one I did with was 26 PhD students and cryptographers at FINSA, um, uh, a research course into uh, information security this spring. And I, ask, I was asking people to, you know, uh, gender and these three pin codes. And this is one of the notes I have received when I did this with a large group of 17-year-old teenagers. And it's, it's, it's kind of fun to not only get the, uh, the, uh, uh, the pin codes, uh, but the cute little doodles as well. Now, I'm 42, and these were 17, so I know it's, it's, it kind of it freaks me out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, at, um, with the students in, in Trondheim um, at the university there, I even received uh, a note with mail, and you have a really cute butt written on the back of it. So I never had that one before, <laughs> but uh, uh, again, kind of fun. And even in this audience, and even though I did say four digits, four digits, and seven digits, there were still two people in the audience who failed to, to write it down correctly. Uh, there's always somebody. Uh, making a small mistake even there. Now, you also you need pretty much the, the mandatory XKCD uh, comic strip somewhere. And there are many good ones. And the closest I could get to a pin while searching yesterday was pretty much this one, which is kind of fun. But uh, it's not really that related to, to my talk today. But still, a nice one. Anyway, here's the uh, interesting stuff. And this is part of the background for, for what I'm, I have been doing. You all remember Rock U, and one of the things that they did at Cambridge, Joe Bono and others, is that they extracted from the Rock U passwords, they extracted all four digit pins, if you want to call it that, from passwords in the ROCU list. And there were quite, quite a few of them. And you also have this guy over in New York, a web developer named Daniel Amitai. And he made an application for iPhone a couple of years ago named Big Brother. And in the application, he made a lock screen that, was, that looked as much as possible uh, as the original iPhone lock screen. And he asked people to enter a four-digit PIN to protect the application. What he didn't tell people is that he collected those PIN codes and sent them back to himself. And he was able to collect approximately 225,000 different four-digit, oh, sorry, not different, <laughs> 225,000 PIN codes from people before somebody actually discovered what was going on and Apple blocked the application from, the, uh, from, uh, from their uh, app store. And those data, I mean, I have also asked him for them, uh, and, and I got them from him. But Cambridge did a heat map of those as well. And you can see they are pretty similar. And after seeing this, I have my good friend and colleague on and off here, Jan Fredrik. And whenever I need something to be coded, because I have this a new crazy idea on something I want to analyze, he's the guy I'm talking to, usually. And I told him about this heat maps, and he said, I got to do something similar like that. 
And the next morning, he said, I have a beta version for you. Go try it out. I'm going, going to sleep now. It looks like this. So what we did, these are from passwords. These are PIN codes collected from iPhones. And these are four-digit PIN codes collected from a physical access control system. And wherever you are working or go to school, if they are using four-digit PIN codes in the physical access control system, there's a very high probability that that physical access control system is storing all the PIN codes in plain text in the system because it's a closed system, even though it's running on Ethernet and connecting hundreds, maybe thousands of different access card terminals, they still consider it to be a closed system. And the PIN codes in there, usually, I mean, when was the last time you changed your four-digit PIN on your access <laughs> card at work? Because a PIN code to me is a password, and according to your password policy, you should change your password every 30, 60, or 90 days. But I'm pretty sure you haven't changed that four-digit PIN in the last 90 days. And not only that, but in many, many cases, I'm also being told by people that they can go to the, their own reception and say, I forgot my PIN code. And the operator will tell you your PIN code. So they can see your PIN code on screen. So we extracted a nice little amount of PIN codes, generated a heat map, Looks like this, and we see parts of the same patterns. Now, to explain these, the horizontal line is the two first digits of your PIN code. The vertical line is the last two digits. So this is 00009999. 1111222233333, and so on up there. This line is 19 something. So 1950, 60, 70, 80, 90, like that. The dark of the blue is the more popular the PIN code. And this specific block here is dates. And essentially what the Joe Bono found out at Cambridge <coughs> is that somewhere, I, I don't remember the exact number, but something like 70, 80% of us will, if you're allowed to pick your own four-digit PIN, you will choose one out of only 100 PIN codes. Or as they also said in this one, there's a 9% chance that I will be able to guess based on pure statistics and without no any knowledge of you at all, except for the fact that I think or know that you have picked your own PIN code, there's a 9% chance I will be able to guess your PIN in three attempts. And that's a little higher than I would have thought. So this is part of the background why I did this. And then also you have the set at data genetics, which is also interesting. He has also been looking into the same stuff. He has a really long blog post. This is just a part of it. And he's, he has made x-ray pictures of the heat map. And there you can see very clear block patterns. I shouldn't say ECB mode because it's not, but it's, you can see very clearly there are blocks in this. And here you can see even better the dates and year patterns. And there's lots more interesting stuff in this blog post on how people have selected these PIN codes. Relative frequency of lead, leading digits as an example. Now, back in... <coughs> 2010, December 2010, we had Howard Smith from Oracle Corporation in the UK here. And he was talking about users' selection of PIN codes. This is the YouTube video um, available so everybody can listen to it. So I'll talk for 40 minutes. And they didn't just look into four-digit PIN codes. They also made some attempts on, with people selecting longer PIN codes as well to see can we in some way predict what kind of PIN codes they will set if they are allowed to do so? And the results are pretty much as expected. People do not choose random PIN codes. So 
a talk that you should have a look at. So back to uh, this research course at FINSA. As I said, 26 people there, PhDs and professors, mostly in cryptography. And I mean, it's, <coughs> it's not that uh, much of a populated heat map, but this is the memorable pin codes chosen by th those. I can see again, here's the lower left block. If we go to the random, the picture changes. And essentially, people are moving away from the lower left block. That's the very simple pattern to spot. But if you go for the seven digit memorable, it looks like it's just scattered everywhere. You can also look at, at it this way. These are digit distribution in memorable four digit pins. The most popular digit is two, and the least, dig, uh, least popular digit is six in the memorable ones. And if you look at the four random, zero is a number that is apparently easy to remember, so they won't be using that because this is supposed to be a pin code that is not to be memorable. And looking at the seven, again, still suddenly you have six again, which is, you're supposed to, it's supposed to be memorable, so don't use six. It's not supposed to be memorable, use zero as one of your digits. And these are you guys. Oh, sorry. Uh, that's Finsa. Oh, uh, on your on top, yeah. So, yeah. How has Finsa? How are you guys? <coughs> and you guys are weird. <laughs> <laughs> but kind of fun to see uh, who would who would like to admit into the seven-digit pin code, a thousand and twenty-four two fifty-six. Raise your hand. There we are. Yeah. So what you created there is an association element, I guess. You didn't pick 1024, 256 randomly. So you have an association element, which is rather easy for us to figure out, I hope. <coughs> but this is what it looked like. And 0000, zero, zero, zero. what's this one? 1234, 1234. That one. That's on the year, 1984. Who is born in 1984? There are two people here, I guess. One, yeah. Girlfriend. Girlfriend. That's the Osatian element, yeah? Girlfriend, yeah? So there you have the Osatian association elements. And also for the seven digits was also uh, kind of weird to see. Now, let's add the 17-year-old teenagers into this mix. On top, you guys, Finsa. And here you have the four-digit memorable pin codes made by 17-year-old teenagers. Again, concentration in the lower left, <coughs> but still pretty much scattered. But there is one red one, 17-year-olds. 1984, date, year of birth. Uh, no, sorry, 1994, yeah. <coughs> so there you have them. I didn't have it bring it here, but the, uh, on this one, there was 193 teenagers in, in the room, boys and girls pretty much like 60, 40 percent mix. And I was kind of looking at the crowd and thinking that, okay, it could be interesting to see if there are differences between boys and girls. 
So in the very last minute, they ask them to write down male or female. And there's the difference between boys and girls in selecting pin codes. The most popular pin code for the girls was, oh sorry, not 1994, 1996, 17 year old. Yeah. But for boys, the year of birth was the second most common pin. What do you think the, the most common four digit pin code was for 17 year old boys? One, three, three, seven. Come on, guys, wake <laughs> up. Leet, of course. And the funny thing is that Leet 1337 was the most popular pin code selected by the boys, but there wasn't a single girl who selected 1337 as her pin code. I, I don't know what you don't play computer games online, I guess. No. Well, it's, it, well, if you look at the digits 1337, you can read them as L-E-E-T, LEET. And that's short of elite, which is a word being used by gamers a lot online to say that, you know, you rule. Really cool. You're like elite. You are really good. Yeah. Quite frequently also used ironically. Also that, yeah. Hmm? Or to make the passing of time. <laughs> yeah, maybe that as well. So that was the four digit memorable. Now looking at the random, it really also changes. They are moving away from the lower left and moving, you know, up into digits. An interesting thing, of course, is that. If you think they have created their own four-digit PIN code, based on the Cambridge research again, you have a list of 100 PIN codes that you should try out first. And if you know anything about the person, date of birth, year of birth, stuff like that, very useful to know, to know about. And then moving on to uh, seven-digit memorable, <laughs> I think the pattern is pretty easy to spot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Period. And that was the same thing with both boys and girls. Now, I, I have this data on file. I'm kind of willing to share them if somebody would like to look into them. But I actually think when I'm looking at the seven digit pin code selected by these teenagers, I think that I'm actually looking at <coughs> capped uh, phone numbers or birth date missing one digit or eventually also social security numbers. Most probably phone numbers. Yep. That's that second dot at the lower right corner. That one? Yeah. Not sure. Eight something, eight seven six. I can pull, yeah, I can pull it up. I mean, you made it too also. So I'm also, to me, it's also very important to put things into context. I mean, guessing PIN codes, yeah, <coughs> fun. Use a four-digit PIN code, maybe not so, so smart. But I've been using this slide and telling people that as, you know, as soon as we're done for today, go back home, talk to your kids, talk to your teenagers, talk to yourself. Write down a list of all the apps that you have installed on your iPhone or Android phone or even Windows phone or iPad and make a note next to them. In this application, I have stored financial data about myself. In this application, I have stored personal like health information about myself. And for this application, I need a password. For this one, I need a PIN code. This doesn't require anything at all. This offers or requires two-factor authentication. And if you make that list, because you haven't done so before, you would probably understand that at least you need a f to use a four-digit PIN code. Maybe you should have something better than that. And Andre have already talked about the iCloud, and maybe it's not so smart to use that stuff either, because configurations for wireless networks and everything can or will 
VPNs for work will eventually end up in that keychain being uploaded. Some of these offers some sort of two-factor authentication. Some of them require two-factor authentication. But all in all, many of them are just username password or not anything at all, pretty much. But still, you might have, may have information stored in there that could be uh, uh, sensitive to you. So Visa have said that we expect 50% of all our transactions in 2020 to be mobile, using a smartphone, a tablet, a wearable electronic jacket, something. The Financial Supervisory Authority of Norway is worried. They are saying that in 2014, next year, when they will do their annual risk analysis, they will be focusing on mobility, the use of personal devices, the use of mobile devices for making payments and receiving money in some way. And the Norwegian Data Protection Authority is also worried about this fact that we are using mobile devices more and more and we have absolutely everything stuffed into that small smartphone of yours. Because they are not convinced security on your smartphone is as good as it is on your PC or Mac or whatever you're using. I'm going to show you one more thing. Um, Now this, this one. This is the credit card portal .no, owned by an online newspaper. And they have made comparisons of all the credit cards available in the Norwegian market today, like pretty close to 80 different cards, as far as I know. And then they list them. And you have things that are really good about this card. And, well, interest rate is pretty high, so you don't like that. But it's a plus. You can select your own PIN code. That's a good thing, they say. And not only that, but many of, of some of the banks will say, we will give you a random PIN code, and we will give you a random PIN code for each and every card that you get from us. Then you have the next ba bank saying, we will give you a randomly created PIN code, but you will get the same PIN code for all your cards. And the next bank, and these are available today, they say, we can give you a ton of cards, and you can select your own PIN code on all of them, and you want to use the same PIN code on all cards, that's fine by us. And also, in several of these banks and credit card companies, you can also log online and press the button, show me my PIN code. So in case you forget it, you can log on and see it. And then we are back to the fiscal access control system again. I forgot my password. OK, here it is. A really strong sign of them using a non-reversible hash function, yeah? Yeah, but... So it doesn't matter if it's some clear text or not. Yeah, but the, uh, and the question is, if, if those PIN codes were encrypted using bcrypt as an example, it would, maybe it would take you a couple of seconds to cycle through all of them. But in that context, you're talking about a targeted attack against the bank, more or less, where somebody have got access to the hashed, encrypted, or plain text no, PIN not codes. No, I mean, huh? you're saying that storing them in plain... Mm -hmm. uh, you could 
Oh, pretty much so, do whatever yeah. you want to it, and you yeah. can still be able to reverse them. Yeah. Reverse them. But I mean, my own personal bank that I'm using, or my primary bank, I have their mobile bank application on my uh, Galaxy S4. And I'm using my social security number as my username, and the social security number in Norway is not a secret. It's a simple formula, and if you can figure out my day of birth and the year I was born, then you could calculate all the possible social security numbers that I might have. And in my case, there are 102 different ones. And then you need to find a service online where you can verify if this is a real social security number or not. And those services tend to appear from time to time where you can do that. So you can easily find my social security number. The next challenge is, on my phone, a four-digit PIN. And I got to pick my own PIN code by my bank. And the interesting thing is, I've asked them, you do not permit me to use anything else than a four-digit PIN. Why not? Why can't I use a six-digit PIN? Why can't I use a password? Why can't I use the levitating businessman icon from Unicode 7 as my password? And the response was, we haven't really thought about that. Mm, perfect. I really don't like the fact that there are a lot of people talking about we need to get rid of passwords. <coughs> but to me, we are seeing a trend where we are moving away from passwords going back to pin codes again, because everything is going mobile. And on cell phones, on smartphones, we prefer to use four-digit pin codes. And lots of people, you probably know somebody as well, they don't use a, even a four-digit pin on their cell phone. And that's not like going in the correct direction, in my opinion. So this, to me, is not good. The interesting thing, again, if you think about risk analysis from the bank perspective, what they will say is that, well, and this is the marketing sales department that does the risk analysis. And what they will say as input for the risk analysis is pretty simple. Either people will be using our credit card or they won't. If they use our card, we make business. If we don't use our card, we won't be making any business at all. <coughs> and if they use our card, we are willing to accept a certain risk associated with fraud. People giving away their PIN code because they're stupid. People writing down a PIN code and storing it on the back side of the card. And you all know the, the simple trick that on, on, your, on your Visa card and MasterCard, you should write down a four-digit PIN code, but not the one that is applicable to the card, of course. Because if somebody steals your car, they will think, oh, you're an absolutely stupid idiot. So they will try that four-digit PIN code that you have written on the card. And when that fails, they only have two attempts left to guess your PIN code. Simple trick. On my Nexus tablet, on my lock screen, I have several uh, four-digit PIN codes on the lock screen. So I think that some, if somebody steals it, they will think, oh, he's an idiot. So they will try the pin codes on the lock screen. Of course, they don't work. This is not good. So thank you. Work, work in progress. Questions about pin codes? Why is it too early? Should we move to the next one? We'll do that. Thank you.